question. What's the definition of a functional group? That is a good question. A functional group is uh, is uh, anything besides a alkane, carbon, or hydrogen. A functional group is anything besides an alkane, carbon, or hydrogen. So for example, this is a functional group, but also this is a functional group. Alkenes are also functional groups. Um, so this is a functional group, but this has no functional groups um, because, uh, unless you count this over here, but it's not really part of a functional group because it doesn't have anything except, it's, an, it's a normal alkane carbon and it doesn't have, um, it's not attached to anything, but uh, it's not attached to anything interesting like an oxygen or a nitrogen. I don't, did that answer your question? Or not? I mean, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Um, another way to put it is, if you need to replace the hydrogen on a carbon with something else, then again, pretty much the only way we know to do that is a radical mechanism. If you want to take off a hydrogen and replace it with something else, eh, maybe that's a little bit of a stretch. But one of the main ways we know how to do that is radical mechanisms. Hydrogens are not usually normally leaving groups, right? So it's normally not that easy to kick off a hydrogen. All right, so, um, so it is important to see that this doesn't have any functional groups yet. That's a big clue that we're going to use a radical mechanism. Um, and um, this term, if you're doing a radical mechanism, you're probably doing radical allylic halogenation, because that's the big thing that you learned this term. Uh, and why is that better than normal radical halogenation? Because it's more selective. If you just have like an alkane like this, well, you can do radical halogenation on this, but it's hard to tell where the bromine's gonna end up. The bromine might end up here or here, say. These are both good candidates for the bromine. Um, uh, but, uh, this is a much better candidate for uh, radical halogenation because now we know the bromine will end up here because this is the allylic carbon. So, um, Bromine is very selective for the allylic carbon. We don't need to worry about it attaching anywhere but allylic carbons. When you're using NBS, all you need to worry about is the bromine attaching to the allylic carbon. Um, so when, uh, that's something else that you should just watch out for. When you're taking the test, um, if you're doing a synthesis problem, check to see if there's any allylic carbons. And if there is an allylic carbon, the instructor probably wants you to do an allylic reaction there. Now, unfortunately, we've learned a bunch of allylic reactions, but you can kind of go down the list and ask if any of them would be relevant. Um, but we can't do an SN2 prime here because there's no leaving groups. Right? Um, so uh, that, and we can't do an SN1 because there's no leaving groups, or an SN2 because there's no leaving groups. So that really cuts it down. The one thing we can do here is a radical halogenation because that doesn't need a leaving group besides a hydrogen. Remember that the way you do that is NBS and light. All right, so that put in our bromine over here. And then um, now what change do we need to make? Well, now we need to get rid of a functional group and basically replace it with hydrogen. Deuterium is really a type of hydrogen. Well, how do we know what mechanism to use? Well, again, we should say this is a defunctionalization. When you're removing a functional group, normally when we remove a functional group, we replace it with another functional group. For example, if we did an SN2, we would replace the bromine with a nucleophile. That wouldn't be a defunctionalization. That's just replacing one functional group with another. Most of the reactions you've learned replace one functional group with another, but here we need to replace a functional group with a non-functional group, just with a hydrogen. And you really only learned two ways to do that. And one is Grignard reagents. That's the one they used in the, uh, in the book. You also learned that you could use lithium aluminum hydride at this point, uh, but we won't cover that here because the instructor didn't use that. Um, making a Grignard reagent is good enough. So how could you possibly think to make a Grignard reagent here? Well, the way you would think of that is by noticing that you need to replace this functional group with a hydrogen. And almost the only way you've learned to do that is by making it into a Grignard. That won't do you any good unless you remember how to make Grignards. Well, a Grignard is made out of an alkyl halide plus magnesium. It wouldn't do any good to add the magnesium to here, because this didn't have the halide yet. First, we have to put in the magnesium. And then, this is a good nucleophilic carbon, and it'll pick off a hydrogen off of water. So, the way to replace a functional group with the hydrogen is make it into a Grignard, and then treat it with water. All right, and then, the, uh, then we use this, which was the step that was pretty easy. So the, the techniques that we saw here are watch out for cases where you need to functionalize something that has no functional group. That would probably be NBS. And look for cases where you need to defunctionalize something and replace it with the hydrogen. And that's probably by making it into a grid yard and treating it um, with uh, water. And in general, watch out for the allylic carbons. You're probably going to want to use those. Oh, by the way, how did we know that we wouldn't, weren't going to put the bromine on this carbon? This is also allylic. How did we know the bromine would end up here and not here when we attacked it with NBS? These are, these are both of them, like, 
Well, remember that the first step is when the bromine, the first propagation step is when we remove the hydrogen. But this doesn't have any hydrogens. Okay. Um, if this had some hydrogens, then it, you could put a bromine over here. So that was one of the purposes of putting in all these methyl groups. All right, so there's a lot going on here. Well, one thing I always really recommend to students is um, to mark the questions that we've gone over in the tutoring so you can come back and do them again. Because it's, um, when I was learning the OCHEM, the thing that really frustrated me was not learning the material, but how quickly I would forget it. So if you come back to this a week or so, you might be surprised how quickly you can kind of forget the steps. This would be a good problem to come back to. Okay.